I'm Dr. Nimal Gamage. I want to talk about something very important today while the COVID pandemic is ravaging our country and the whole world. And we know that most of the people who die from this COVID pandemic are unhealthy people. And the commonest disease among humans today is metabolic syndrome. In countries like America, more than half the people have it. When you have something which uh, causes you to die from this pandemic 20 times more than a normal person, I think we should all be aware of it and should try to correct this problem. For example, in America, we know that 20 times more people die per hundred or per thousand or per million than in a country like us where people do not have metabolic syndrome as much as in USA and this metabolic syndrome is caused by the wrong diet which we follow and this is the same wrong diet uh, which was according to our government uh, as well as the doctors recommendations that we used to believe this is good for us but now from the new nutritional research and also finding out that some of the recommendations given were influenced by the food industry and powerful entities who only had interest in making profits and had no interest in the health of the regular people. I'll give you another number to look at. In USA, if you just go to any website like Worldometer, you can see that only 1.7% of the people who got infected actually died. And from the latest data I have seen, vaccinations can give you only a little bit extra protection. For example, 1.4% of the people who were fully vaccinated ended up dying from COVID. So if you have these underlying diseases, especially if you have metabolic syndrome, your risk of dying goes up and we should all be aware of it. And this picture shows you the classic textbook explanation of metabolic syndrome and most of us know about it and people who have metabolic syndrome are fat, they have big stomachs, they have high blood sugar, high blood pressure, high lipid profile uh, and also they say low LDL levels. But this is actually not very true because we know a lot of thin people who are eating the wrong diet have metabolic syndrome. They might not look like they're fat. They might look like they have perfect weight for their height, but they still have metabolic syndrome. On the other hand, 20% of the people who are really fat don't have metabolic syndrome because their fat is the healthy fat, which is the fat which is under the skin. Now, 40% of the patients with metabolic syndrome are actually thin. So, what matters is that you don't get fat in the wrong places. What are the wrong places? The worst place to collect fat is in the liver and this fat collects because of the wrong diet. The next wrong place is your muscle. Again, that only happens if you are eating the wrong diet. Today, uh, most of us eat bad food and we overburden the hormonal mechanisms in the pancreas where we make insulin and the liver which makes glucose. So many medical experts believe today that insulin resistance is the number one health crisis facing everybody around the world. So following a list of ancestral foods that means the food the human beings evolved on. We know that human beings have been on earth for more than 2 million years in some shape or form. In fact, the Homo sapiens, the other kind, have lived here for more than a million years. So the food we eat basically started since 1970s. And before that, people ate 
something closer to what our ancestors ate. So we had to go and look at what our ancestors ate because our human body evolved on those by eating more and more processed food, industrial food, we have become um, deceased and we have become liable to die from things like COVID. Not only that, most of the people die today, even if not for COVID, from cancer, heart disease, strokes, Alzheimer's, kidney problems, all these are caused by metabolic syndrome. So intermittent eating or intermittent fasting is important for this because our bodies actually work most effectively in a fasted state because I think the human beings throughout that million years were mostly fasting. They didn't sit down and eat three times a day for sure. When they got up in the morning, they didn't have food. They, ha they just had to uh, go mostly do hunting and gathering, get the food, and they only ate usually during the lunch time or even later. So most of the hours of the day they were fasting. So when you fast, it taps into our genetically hardwired regenerative and renewal pathways and we get a boost in our immune system, cognitive abilities, also metabolism, and also anti-inflammatory functions. I mean, we may have seen, we have pets in our houses, when they get sick, the first thing they do is stop eating because uh, they know that when you are fasting, your immune system works best so you can recover from an infection or a disease, especially an infection. So consume a very high carbohydrate meal in the morning like most of us do today put us on a blood sugar roller coaster for the rest of the day so the best time to have breakfast or breakfast is when we actually get real hunger and that only happens and we only know when it happens is if you are on the diet we are supposed to eat if you are eating the bad diet which most of us eat today we will never experience that natural hunger. Also, it's important to say that we will never experience the optimum health and the happiness which comes with that optimum health, optimum physical performance, optimum mental performance. So, uh, this is a good time to focus on that. We also know that when we burn fat and ketones, we only burn fat and ketones if you are not eating today's bad diet, but we are eating the ancestral diet. And that diet had no refined carbohydrates, no grains. That means no rice, no bread. Ancestors before 10,000 years did not even know about bread and rice and grains. So they were eating mostly uh, hunt uh, and gather food and that food actually mostly uh, turn uh, if not it is fa if not fat it turn into fat because of the digestion for example if you are eating certain root you gathered some roots and ate most people ate uh, until 8000 years ago we didn't know how to cook so most of our ancestors ate without cooking and that uncooked root vegetables the starch actually becomes fat in the colon because bacteria works on it and digest that into uh, small fat small chain fatty acids and that's what get absorbed and they become ketones and get burnt in as ketones in the mitochondria uh, the history of mitochondria is very important and very interesting and if you are interested you can read uh, listen to one of my lectures which I will put on later about the mitochondria this is a picture of the mitochondria I'm showing here and uh, so we'll talk about it in another lecture and this is the history of the human evolution dietary timeline 
if you take our entire evolution as one day like when you look at a clock this is 12 hours only 10,000 years ago out of our million or two million years of evolution we started doing agriculture we started eating wheat corn rice and that is just a small part of our big uh, evolutionary history and then since 1950 or 1970 only we had uh, an explosion of industrial food in the world uh, and so all the bad food some of them are mentioned here sugar one of the worst or the worst food and refined carbohydrates one of the worst or the worst and industrial seed oils if you can remember anything else from this lecture if you can just remember sugar refined carbohydrates and the vegetable oils or seed oils such as corn oil canola oil soybean oil uh, these are the worst food on earth and so basically just to mention that how much sugar is in our body usually in our whole body at any given time in the blood we have only five grams of glucose circulating that means one teaspoon it's because glucose is toxic and so why is it toxic because glucose does not burn clean in our mitochondria it creates what we call antioxidants sorry oxygen uh, free radicals and so it it means that anytime we have high production of oxygen free radicals then we have more damage to our dna and i will talk about this in another lecture and a lot of people think oxygen is important to us when we get sick but although it's important if you give a person 100 percent oxygen to breathe in four days they will die from oxygen toxicity and oxygen toxicity is the reason why bigger animals live longer because they can keep their cells at a low oxygen level so uh, just an example of uh, this and we can talk about oxygen in more detail in another lecture for people who want to know the science of it so we should know that hormones influence our hunger and so we can eat the wrong food we will mess up our hormones and if you looked at the way we the doctors learn that calories are uh, one calorie in and one calorie out that means what you eat is what makes you fat what makes you thin that's absolutely wrong and we will talk about it later but it's the hormones which are most important so if you eat the wrong kind of food you will gain fat much easier maybe 100 times easier than if you're eating the right food so therefore if you're eating the right kind of food sometimes you don't have to worry about portions how much you're eating your hunger which uh, comes naturally i mean you feel the natural hunger and natural satiety you don't need anything else to figure out how much you need to eat every day so visceral fat we mentioned earlier uh, you can find them around abdominal organs or inside of the abdomen like the liver or in the heart or the muscle it's very destructive and because this visceral fat is what what produces inflammatory chemicals which we know as cytokines and if you read about covid you know that people die from a cytokine storm so people with metabolic syndrome already have inflammation due to the fat in the wrong places which produce cytokines and so because of that these are the people who are more likely to die when they get covid so if you have problem areas of fat just under the skin don't worry about it because that is healthy fat you can lose all your fat on a good diet bad fat as well as uh, fat under the skin which makes you ugly although it doesn't make you sick another thing don't uh, think that the sugar like substances to give you a sweet taste is healthy for example we know aspartame which is a sugar substitute spikes insulin by 
20% more than actually plain white sugar. So that is not a way to escape the ravages of sugar. Also remember many people have digest, uh, difficulty in digesting fructose because fructose is most in most of our processed food especially high fructose corn syrup which is made from corn uh, actually uh, they have bacteria working on the corn starch which act produces glucose first and then glu most of the glucose is converted to fructose and so high fructose corn syrup is more than 60 percent most of the time more than 60 percent fructose and act it's actually worse than the regular sugar since it's cheaper than sugar now most of the food industry most of the food made by the food industry contains high fructose corn syrup is in everything is in your ketchup is in most of the packaged foods especially since 1970 we got wrong information that we should have low fat diet food food industry had been cutting down on the di uh, fat and increasing on carbs like these sugar and high fructose corn syrup in the processed food so people who have this fructose intolerance they get flatulence cramps bloating and diarrhea when you eat things with sugar or fructose and also remember that most of the milk products we have come from the cows producing a1 and a2 casing both a2 casing are not so bad but the a1 casing or the a1 uh, cows producing this a1 casing can lead to cancer so we have to be aware of it also a lot of the milk products have sugar in the form of lactose so it's not healthy either unless it's fermented and unless it comes not from feed lots i mean not from industrial industrial cows who are given lots of hormones and antibiotics so their milk contains most of that and is toxic so for example if you eat potato and rice flour without cooking in the body they actually turn into fat before absorbing so we that we call that resistant starch when you cook them they get absorbed as sugar or glucose that's an important thing to know because la most of our ancestors most of the time didn't eat cooked food so this is a good way a good chart for people who want to eat healthy today and i would say people in country like sri lanka can easily adopt to a healthy diet so absolutely don't eat the things in the black which means grains vegetable oils sugar uh, even most of the fruits because a lot, lot of the fruits today have too much fructose Fru uh, the fruits have been evolved for the last 100 years to be produced by selection and hybrid hybridization to produce very sweet fruits and they are not healthy so fish and eggs are healthy meat produced properly is healthy and there are some safe carbohydrates like in root vegetables like sweet potato uh, and maybe the green plant and ash plant and taro rice if it is wild rice not regular rice but try to avoid that too if you are trying to lose weight and you can eat some other sweet plants such as beetroots carrots berries and fruits and a lot of vegetables a day and oil is good to eat oil because when you eat more oil you can cut down on the carbs uh, also when you cut down on the carbs you need to get calories for energy so we get it from good oil good oil is coconut oil coconut oil is the best oil on earth it prevents alzheimer's and the coconut oil is 60 percent small chain fatty acids which gets absorbed it doesn't even need to be digested by uh, people even People who don't even have a gold bladder can digest coconut oil without any problem, not other oils. And the second best oil is olive oil and maybe uh, avocado oil. Only a few other oils are good. So those are the main oils. Most of the oils we eat commonly uh, with our food such as corn oil, canola oil, soybean oil, 
vegetable oils are not natural they use highly industrial processes to extract that oil and is also very unhealthy also uh, remember uh, if you exercise too much you do damage to your body so especially for a woman who does heavy exercises without eating would get into uh, problems such as amenorrhea hypothyroidism insomnia um, and so it's remember exercise is not the way to become healthy most people think okay i can eat whatever i want but if i exercise and lose weight i become i'll be very healthy that's wrong absolutely wrong uh, also remember why sometimes you have to eat animal food because vitamin a vitamin a2 choline and also some other things like iodine iron are not really uh, present in large amounts or essential amounts in plant foods and so digestive enzymes and the hormones work best during daylight hours so we need a little downtime in the night so eating in the night is absolutely no no it's not healthy so anytime we do heavy exercise so that our heart rate goes above the maximum uh, recommended which is 160 minus your age so if you are 60 years age your heart rate should never go above 100 when you exercise and under those circumstances you cause extreme stress to the body and release cortisol and other bad hormones and that does damage to your body so exercise is necessary is not healthy just not do exercise and just sit on the chair and watch tv all day long you need about 30 minutes of exercise moderate exercise a day every day or up to 3 days a week to get the optimum benefit from exercise and also remember whatever you do in exercise if you are not eating the right food you can never be healthy there are a lot of people who are thin walk around thinking they're healthy have metabolic syndrome because they're eating the bad food nothing makes you healthy if you eat bad food so there are a lot of uh, food industry f- uh, which actually promote exercises for losing weight so they can distract people from eating right and keep eating the bad food also if you don't sleep properly you will spike your cortisol about 100% in your body and which causes damage which causes you to also eat overeat uh, and have cravings for carbohydrates and suppress your immune function as well another thing if your home is not organized properly you create stress hormones i'm actually talking about stress here mostly because stress is also important for health so living a stress free life and knowing how to eliminate stress in your life is also important which is not part of main part of my lecture today uh, most people might think that people are healthier in warm countries not really true so our optimum temperature for the human body is 68 degrees fahrenheit or 20 degrees celsius and they had done studies from certain animals and when they were transferred to a warm area they die much earlier because you know our damage from oxygen to the body is higher at a higher temperature also our enzymes work too fast uh in a higher temperature it's just another factor to know uh at the same time i would like to uh, let you know my people live long today is not because we are eating healthy it's mostly because our economy is so good that we have very little stress and we have n- very little amount of threats to our uh, living you know we have no uh, we have eliminated most of the infections and people are more peaceful they have a more social life today with uh, better housing and we have refriger- refrigerators to keep our vegetables so uh, actually talking we can actually eat very healthy and live much longer 
when people have uh, animals for example who have threats such as predators have a short life and they have their offsprings early in their life they have done studies with opossums as a kind of animal who have a lot of predators in natural life but when they take them out to an island and put them there they actually live two times longer but they also had less offsprings and that's very important so i think even when it comes to human beings because we are safer today we live safe lives that gives us long life as well all these things are important for long life and longevity is again not my focus today so we can talk in more detail in another lecture and uh, now we can talk about this there's a doc doc herman ponzer who did studies on hadza tribe in tanzania and these tribes ha- today live like hunter gatherers lived and they do a lot of walking they exert a lot and they still only burn about 200 calories more than a person who live in usa and go to work sit in front of a computer and go home it's because our bodies can adapt to heavy exercise by cutting down the metabolism and making certain changes so you don't have to eat much more because you are exercising more on the other hand just because you exercise more you can't eat more uh, because then again you will be fat but again most important part is that you don't really need a lot of exercise to be healthy and you become healthy by eating the right food and doing a little bit of exercises and people who do a whole lot of exercises actually do damage to their body and they die early so today our food lacks a lot of antioxidants and vitamins because the way we make food in agricultural land the damage done to the top soil over uh, thousands of years that we've been growing food on same lands therefore if you are really interested in becoming very healthy sometimes a short period of supplementation of food with vitamins and antioxidants are important and you can get the best products uh, and if you call me for details i can give you more information on that